Good morning, YouTubers. Today's Sunday. Is it the 27th? Yes, 27th today. And today I'm doing something that I've not done on YouTube before, and that is a bakery uh, program. Today I'm going to be baking Aberdeen rolls, or rowies as we call them up north. And um, they're, they're not for people who are on diets, I must just say that straight off the bat. But they're a good winter, uh, it provides a lot of nourishment in winter when you need it. Um, so no one, no one that's on a diet try this, but uh, all the rest of you can. And really, they're really delicious, aren't they Brian? Yeah. He loves them. So I first of all, wait. you can't wait. <laughs> First of all, um, I'll go through the ingredients with you, and to save time, I've already weighed them out. Um, first of all, this makes 16, 16 buns altogether, well, rolls, rowies. Um, you want uh, 1.2, sorry, 1 pound and 2 ounces of strong pl plain flour. Okay. You want um, 275 grams of butter and 100 grams of lard. I know it sounds a lot, but trust me, it'll be fine. You need a 7 gram pack of yeast. You need a tablespoon of coarse sea salt, which I'll just pop in there for the time being. And you need another tablespoonful of soft brown sugar. I'm going to make a mess with this so I'll do it over the sink so you won't see what I'm doing but I am measuring out a, a tablespoon of the soft brown sugar as best I can. There we are. There we are. One tablespoon. I think you can see that and I shall pop that in, in there just for the time being. Um, I think that's everything you need. So there's the flour, the yeast, the brown sugar, the sea salt, um, the butter and the lard. You also need 12 and a quarter ounces of warm water and this is for the yeast or it's 350 mils. It's for the yeast um, and so now what you do is you get your warm water. I'll switch off just now till I've got the warm water. Uh, you'll have to excuse me, this is the first time I've done this. Right folks, I've got the warm water ready and what you do is you make a well in the middle of the flour and you add the salt and the soft brown, light brown sugar. You add that to it. I'll get rid of these scales because we don't need them now. And um, just give it a mix in. Make a well, add your yeast, just mix it all in, and then add your water, and just dribble it in and stir as you go. I use gloves because I don't like the feel of uh, the the stuff on my hands, and I break out in a rash usually. Make sure that it's mixed well in. Give it a good bashing together. As you can see, it's very very sticky, and then. Now folks, once you've mixed it together, you need to knead it for 8 to 10 minutes. And I'll show you how to knead dough. I'm sure you already know, but what you do is flatten it out a bit and you bring it forward and push it with your uh, this part of your hand. Can you see that? No. This part of your hand. The heel of your hand. 
or your wrist part. And you need it like that, turning it, pushing it over. You've got to be quite vigorous with it. The more vigorous, the better. And this serves two purposes. It mixes all the yeast through out the the dough and mixes all the other ingredients just as well. And it will make a better it'll make it rise better and probably quicker. But you have to do this for about ten minutes. But I'm not going to stand here and do this for 10 minutes because uh, you'll get bored. So I'm going to switch off now and then uh, I'll show you what to do after that. There we are folks. Um, what I've done is cleaned the bowl, put the, the ingredients back in the bowl. Well, I've uh, um, rubbed olive oil around the bowl so that it doesn't stick put the ingredients back in the bowl and now I'm just going to cover it with a tea towel and it will sit there for about an hour until the yeast has doubled in size okay now folks while you're waiting for the yeast to double in size you just cream in the butter with the lard. You don't. You don't have it to, to be too thorough. Just uh, generally mix it through, and then replace it in the fridge so that it stays cold. Because you need it to be cold uh, for the last part of the recipe. So I'll pop it back into the fridge, and um, there it will remain until the yeast has risen. Now, folks, I think. You'll see that it's risen, it's doubled its size and so all we do now is give it another um, another kneading for about a minute and a half, okay, or two minutes, two minutes. So now after having kneaded it for one to two minutes, uh, then get a rolling pin. Make sure that you dust it. Sorry, I hit the camera there. Roll it into like a, an oblong. about 18 inches long it always springs back that's Michael making toast toaster going off um, and take about a quarter of your butter and spread it well you can't spread it just break it break it like that onto the first two-thirds of the dough there we are, I think that's about a quarter then what you do is you fold Fold it over like that and then fold the other side over like that. Just press down the edges. Hopefully you're seeing this. Just let me check. Yeah. Press down the edges with your rolling pin to seal it a little bit there. Then turn it so that it's like that and then roll it again. 
pressing down so that the butter doesn't shoot out the ends which have had happen to me on many occasions so you roll it again to an 18 inch long strip it doesn't matter how thick you know how wide the strip is just as long as you get it to about 18 inches and then you get your get another quarter of the it's awkward having gloves on doing this but I prefer to have the gloves on so three quarters of it like that fold it over and then bring the end up and over use the rolling pin to squash it down and then turn it again and start rolling out again now it's essential that you do it this way because that's that's the proper way to do it and it, it will disperse the the butter and the lard really where you want it to go it makes a crispy I just get a wee bit more flour just a little bit more flour on, on the side and on the top yes it makes a crispier um, buttery I think I'm going to take off one of the gloves. Just make it easier for me. So three quarters of the way up. Sorry, it's very sticky. Very, very sticky. There we are, and then fold it over and over again. I think you do this four times, four times in all. Always turning it, never turning it over, but always just turning it half a half a turn. And then the rest of the ingredients will go in now, once we get it rolled out. I hope you're still seeing this. It's sliding all over the place. It doesn't matter if a bit comes out, which inevitably happens, but don't worry about that. I'll put the, uh, the rest of the mixture in. Now I know what you're saying to yourself. You're probably saying to yourself, my goodness, that is so unhealthy. There's a lot of butter and um, a bit of lard going in there. But what you find is that a lot of the butter will melt out onto the, the tray that you've got it on. So you're not going to be consuming all that amount of butter. There we are. And then folding over again and folding over again. There we are, turning it. Now, this is the last time you roll it, you roll it out. It, you have to roll it to a, a, a half an inch thick and then leave it for a little bit to rest 
and then we'll cut it into the, the rolls. So I'll switch off just now until I get it all rolled out for you and then I'll get back to now, you. Now folks, once it's all rolled out, then you cut the, the dough. I don't have a big enough cutter so I use Mr. Uh, Mr. Happy Cup to do it. Um, and all you do is just pop it like that and push down. And that's your first one. Um, and I'll show you them all when I've done them all. Okay? Uh, what I forgot to mention, folks, was that you put your oven on to gas mark 6 or electric 200 centigrade uh, and let it warm up. So, folks, that's what some of them look like when you're ready to leave them to proof again. Um, and they will spill twice their size again. So just cover them with a tea towel and uh, leave them to rise again. It, they, they won't take so long, probably about 20 minutes maybe. Right folks, uh, they've, the, the rolls have swelled up to a, a decent sort of size, I'll just show you. <coughs> Can you see that? They're about an inch big now and they will swell more when they go into the oven when you know when they come out the oven so we'll pop them in the oven now that one in there and that one in there I've got another one to put in but we'll let these ones cook away first. Now they stay in there uh, for about 18 minutes but um, it's possible you could take them out before then. You just have to keep your eye on them um, and watch that they don't, uh, uh, you know, burn or whatever. Um, and um, I'll get back to you when they're cooked. Bye for now. And there we are, folks. That's the first batch out. That's the front of them. And that's them turned over so you can see what they would look like. And they're quite crispy and nice. Right. This is uh, Brian in Seventh Heaven. Yeah, the rugby's on. Got my brow my rowies in my beer. So. <laughs> <laughs> Scotland, away we go. <laughs> That's all for folk now, folks. See you in the next video. Bye for now.